Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to the video you've been waiting for. I am talking about gaming on the ASUS ROG Phone 5. Now, the ROG Phone series is well known for its gaming parallels, but this video we're going to find out if the ROG Phone 5 is truly taking back the crown as the king of gaming phones. Welcome back guys. So if it's the first time watching videos on this channel, definitely hit the subscribe button and notification icon. If you care about gaming on smartphones or just gaming in general, we do that right here. So in my hand is the ASUS ROG Phone 5 or the ROG Phone 5, whatever you want to call it. And ASUS has done many different things on this device and we'll be looking at them in different sections. We'll cover audio, we'll cover gaming, we'll cover accessories and we'll cover just the overall functionality of this device including of course battery life. So let's start off with the aesthetics of the ROG Phone 5. In size it's 6.7 inches to some that might seem large but again that's pretty much similar to your S21 Ultra or your Galaxy Note 20 Ultra as well. So size wise you've got something that is standard within the smartphone realm. It comes in two different colors you've got the white and you've got the phantom black and I do like the fact that it comes in white now instead of the stereotypical gaming colors that are usually just black and red or whatever the case may be. Styling is a bit different it's got a nice curved back to it and of course you do have RGB lighting with the ASUS logo at the back of the device. This of course is very customizable you can do it directly within the software and that is really nice to see. Now in terms of the display as you know as gamers we want something that gives us the best amount of functionality and this display is 144 hertz of course it's got an adaptive refresh rate so you can uh, set it at auto and of course we'll set the refresh rate to, to match what you're doing at the time or you can manually change from 144 hertz down to 120 or 60 hertz if you choose and the big question is does it eat up battery life the short answer is no but there's a much better answer so stay tuned for that within the video now it's not only 144 hertz display it also has 300 hertz touch sampling so while you're gaming and your fingers are gliding across the screen it is so much easier to tap and move and doesn't feel stiff which is something you find with a lot of gaming smartphones. Now you have a couple other functionalities that are really geared towards the gamer. You've got two USB ports, one at the bottom and then the other one on the left hand side with of course a proprietary port for the cooling fan. Now that cooling fan has a lot more functionality to it. It's got also a built-in 3.5 mm jack which is great so you can do pass through but the ability to have this side port is great so while you're gaming you can charge your device while gaming at the same time. Now at the very top on the left hand side of the device you do have your touch sensitive trigger buttons. They've been more tuned uh, to the ROG Phone 5, they've got better tuning so they feel more comfortable and also the triggers feel really solid while pressing them and of course they are quite remappable overall. When it comes to audio, this is where the big part is with this device because you've got a headphone jack back now and you've got some stereo speakers which we should take a look quickly right now and then we'll talk more about it. So you just heard the speakers of the ROG Phone 5 and they do a fantastic job. They are crisp, loud and clear. I mean, I put them back there and you can still hear them within the room. That's because they use two symmetric super linear um, drivers that are powered by a mono amplifier. So you're giving you that really rich, loud, clean sound. Probably the loudest I've heard from any smartphone and also the clearest I've heard from any smartphone in a while. And that's, that's really good. Now it's got a built-in uh, amplifier app so you can of course change different EQs, music, gaming, uh, movies, you can also manage your EQs in a custom fashion if you want to. But the other cool thing about audio on this phone, it's got a 3.5mm jack which you know I love right? Uh, but that jack is also powered by an ESS 9280 Pro DAC and as well as also a built-in amplifier as well from ESS Sabre. 
allowing you to drive your headphones to the best. So whether you're using Asus's uh, Sentara 2 headphones, which are their gaming headphones, uh, they do a really good job actually, they are really nice. Or you can drive something a little bit better like the DT1990 Pro, which I absolutely love. So you take your gaming experience to the very next level. The audio is so good. And I like that they've done some work there giving you that audio experience that you should definitely get as a gamer. Now, how does that audio mix in with gaming? You know, it's time for us to go check out some gaming performance. So let's take a look. So when it comes to gaming performance, you can expect the best from the ROG Phone 5. Powered by the Snapdragon 888 processor and a whopping 16 gigabytes of RAM in the model I have, or 18 gigabytes of RAM in the Ultimate Edition, uh, you can expect the best performance from this device. Now, do we need 16 or 18 gigabytes of RAM? I don't think so, uh, but ASUS is giving the opportunity to have that on this device. Now, when it comes to benchmarks, you're looking at a Geek benchmark score of 1,118, single core, and of course, uh, multi core is 3,661. So, the multi core performance beats out what we have with the Galaxy S21 Ultra, both Exynos and Snapdragon, but the single core comes in between the Exynos and the Snapdragon numbers. But that is numbers and we don't care about that. We saw some of that gameplay. It looked smooth, it looked fantastic, it looked great. So what kind of performance can we get with this device? This is the real important part with the ROG Phone 5. So starting off with the most basic, easy game that we all like to play, Call of Duty Mobile, runs well, runs at 60 uh, frames per second. Each gameplay session I had, uh, I did multiple shorter gameplay sessions and it ran fine and it ran well. Uh, the one thing to note, it's not updated yet, so it's not running at the max setting, just at high setting. It's something because this device, while testing it, was not available out yet, so you can expect that. Now, moving over to PUBG Mobile, we played roughly around 15 to 20 minutes of gameplay. Now, what you will note is that the game settings is smooth extreme. I do not have Ultra HD Ultra available yet, so I could not test it out because again, we need an update for that. But playing at smooth extreme, solid 60 frames per second, temperatures while on this hand stayed at about 94 degrees, which was roughly, I believe around uh, 32 or so. So it stayed nice and cool pretty much that whole gameplay session. Now, of course, the game we've been waiting for, Genshin Impact. What kind of gaming performance can we get from this? So, when briefed by ASUS, they said Genshin Impact for about 30 minutes to an hour gameplay. We should be getting about 55 frames per second with X mode on. So I tried that out. I had X mode on, I took off the cooling fan, which just so you guys know, this is really important. And I played for about 30 minutes and 50 seconds. And we got about 56 frames per second. I had, of course, Genshin's highest gameplay mode with, you know, 60 FPS on. It ran really solid, really well. Temperatures, on the other hand, did ramp up quite extraordinarily here. So by the end uh, of my gameplay session at 30 minutes, the screen itself was about 120 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's about 50 degrees Celsius, uh, while the rear of the phone was also between 118 to 120. So it ran rather hot on this device. That's something that happens. Now, I did the same test again, played Genshin Impact with the cooler on the device for 30 minutes. And at playing this way, I actually got 59 frames per second, so pretty much close to 60 frames per second, which was good to see the impact of that cooling fan enabling better uh, performance. And in terms of temperatures, the display still was between 118 to 120 at its maximum, while the rear of the device dropped down to about 94 to 98 degrees. So ASUS promises about a 10% decrease, and that definitely shows, it means that look, where the processor is, where cooling is most needed, the fan does work and I was able to get better performance from Genshin Impact. So that is something to take note if you're looking at the kind of performance you're gonna be getting from this device. In terms of any game you wanna play, it will play well, it will play really smooth. You can check out the gameplay clips, they look 
absolutely gorgeous, very smooth, great performance. A quick note on uh, game streaming services like Stadia and Xbox Game Pass. I will say using the Kanai controller, it was a seamless experience. It played fast, smooth, very responsive. Of course, you've got Wi-Fi 6 built into this device, so you've got a very clean and fast gameplay experience. Now with all that gaming performance, you're asking how is battery life on this device? So ASUS has come up with a very interesting way of implementing battery on the ROG Phone 5. It's got a 6,000 milliamp battery, which sounds absolutely fantastic, but it's split into two 3,000 milliamp batteries there to effect faster charging and also better performance in the long run. So with that uh, 6,000 milliamp battery, you've it comes with a 65 watt charger and ASUS promises about zero to 151 minutes, we got about 58 minutes within an hour, which is fine. I mean, that was actually great to see in terms of battery performance. And I was glad that you could actually fast charge this here, but it's got a couple of battery modes that are quite interesting overall. So when you look at the device, you can actually schedule your battery charging if you want to, which means that uh, instead of you taking advantage of that full charge, it, full fast charging, you can schedule the time that it will actually fully charge for you. So when you're going to bed, you can plug it in and maybe between two to six a.m. in the morning, that's when it does its full charge and you're good to go. You can also slow down that charge process so it doesn't go to zero to 100 all the way. It can actually slow down from 80% and then trickle charge all the way to 100. Again, extending the life of your battery. But the best feature that I love for gamers is kind of like, Steady Charge, I believe is the name it's called. It gives the ability to do a power pass through. So when you're gaming, you plug it in, right? Using that uh, side port, and you don't want to basically uh, use your battery, and you don't want to charge the device while you're gaming because of course that might will affect uh, performance overall. Uh, what you can do is basically stop the charging and stop the use of the battery and pass, do a pass through power from the charger. So basically it's running from the charger, you lose no juice on your device. That is great for battery management, it's great for sustaining the battery life on this device. I think they've done a really good job there. So when it comes to accessories, Asus has done a really good job with the ROG 5, giving you enough accessories that you will definitely need and want to use. Now, the first one is the Aeroactive 5 cooler. We know the Asus phones come with coolers in the past with the ROG phones. Now, with the ROG Phone 5, you don't get it, so you can buy an accessory. If you get the Pro Ultimate Edition, you will get this cooler. What's interesting about the cooler it is that not only does it cool, and it comes with the 3.5 mm jack, it has that port for your USB Type-C cable. It also has two extra paddles, which are great because they are remappable uh, for your gaming experience. So once you use it, you have four extra buttons to use while gaming on your mobile uh, device. You've got the two top uh, touch sensitive uh, buttons as well as the extra paddles, which makes your gaming experience absolutely awesome. Playing games like uh, Call of Duty Mobile as well as also PUBG, it is so great to use it and is very easy to set up. Now the next accessory I do like is the Konai 3. And this is what it turns into when you use it together with your ROG phone. R5. I love it because it gives you a full mobile gaming experience that allows you to play, of course, your mobile games all the way through, but also uh, your game streaming services like Stadia, as well as also uh, Xbox Game Pass. What's great is that this gives you full button layout. You've also got extra buttons at the back that are remappable. Your, your ROG lights up at the back of your phone, but you can take this off. You can slide it back into its dock. And then you've got the Kanai controller as a controller. This is pretty good. Altogether, this makes the gaming experience on the ROG phone pretty much to the next level. And these are accessories that if you want to use them to enhance your gameplay performance, these are absolutely worth it. Now, before we round up, some of you are asking, okay, Thunder E, it's got, it's got cameras on there, right? How the, how's the camera performance? Well, simply put, the cameras are okay. Honestly, this is the part of the device that I am really bummed out about because of the pricing we should expect to see here. Asus has put in a triple camera system, one with a macro lens that really isn't worth it. The camera stills are okay and decent. 
Uh, the front facing camera does a good job at it, but I think overall the experience here is something that I expected to see better, especially when Asus has devices like the Zenfone series, which has a really solid camera system. I was hoping to see that here. You've got video with the device as well, which has a steady mode, uh, which apparently if you turn on video stabilization, it cuts all recording to 1080p or basically super steady, if you will, uh, but it can record up to 8K, 4K 60, and so on and so forth. I would say you're not buying this device for the camera, will give you decent photos and, and video, but if you want a game, then let's talk about it before we round up this video. The RG Phone 5. We mentioned a bunch of things in this video, the things I like and I don't like, but overall, what do I think about this device? I think it's a solid phone. I think it's a great gaming phone with great gaming features and all the gaming capabilities you could ever dream of. In terms of taking the crown as the gaming phone, I think it's back. I think Asus has taken that crown and they've held it strong and are calling out competitors to challenge them. I think if you want to pick this up, yeah, definitely go ahead. If you're a gamer, you like to game, you want something that will last you the whole day and more, the RG Phone 5 is definitely worth it for you. If you want to take pictures, not so much. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you like videos like this. If you want to see more, if you want to see more gaming on this device, definitely head over to Board Gamer. I do have some tips and tricks on how to use the ROG Phone 5, you can definitely check out there. If you have any questions or any comments, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and always enjoy your entertainment. And I'll see you there.